Welcome to Pro Practice, your guide to refine, enliven, and illuminate the piano repertoire. My name is Josh Wright, and today's video is part of the new technique series where we go over scales, arpeggios, triads, and seventh chords in every key. And today we're going to be focusing on the key of B, so we'll go over B major and B minor. You're not going to find, uh, in my opinion, two more polar opposite scales um, so far as difficulty level. I find that uh, for me, B major is the easiest scale. And B minor is one of the most awkward. And I've had a lot of feedback from students kind of saying the same thing. F sharp, ma F sharp minor and G flat major is another one where they're both very, like G flat major is so easy and then F sharp minor is so awkward. So today we're gonna go over um, a unique way to practice this. If this is uh, your first video of this series, if you're viewing this for the first time, um, you'll, know, you'll notice as you go through more videos from this technique series that I present a different unique way to practice scales, arpeggios, trads, seventh chords in every video. So by the time you're done with the series, you'll have at least 12 different ways to practice these um, uh, technique exercises uh, to help you become as efficient as possible in your practice. Each video I start with a different uh, concept so uh, I'll rotate between scales, arpeggios, trads, and seventh chords. The last video I did scales so let's start today with arpeggios. Alright, um, so let's just go over the fingering really quickly. Uh, so for E major we're just going to use one, two, three. Focusing on rotating a little bit this way, just a little and a little bit under, but again, we don't want to wing out our elbow. So we just want it, you want your elbow to stay static. If you need to hold your elbow like this, just to make sure it's not winging out. I'm not saying you have to be a statue and play like this, but just let it have a lot of rotation and fluidity at the wrist and pretty static and stable at the arms because the arms and the back are your sources of weight and support and then your fingers are what translates that into the keys, all right? Focusing on nice, smooth sound. Totally connected, let's try left hand, five, three, two, one. in your preference you could use 5-4-2-1. I tend to like that because it keeps my hand a little straighter. If you like 5-3-2-1 your hand will turn a little bit this way but it still works because um, you're going to be rotating anyway. I prefer 5-4-2-1 though. All right now for the unique way to practice this. Uh, today we're going to go over in my opinion, probably the, the single most helpful exercise there is in piano. Um, and I, maybe I'm just biased towards it, but I notice greater results from this specific way of practicing than any other way when I'm having difficulty with a passage that has consecutive 16th notes or a fast passage of any sort, whether it's eighth notes, quarter notes. Um, of course, each piece has a different, tempi, a, a different tempo. So uh, here we go. So what we do, we're going to start out real slow. Let's start with major. And we're going to just count to five. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep fairly light on the first four notes. And then on the fifth note, we're going to accent and raise our wrist. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay? Let's go a little faster. not easy. Um, you might have to go slow for a while to get that because five is not 
a, a number that lends itself well to classical music because usually things are in two, three, or four. So five just hardly ever lines up. There are some, uh, you know, 20th century pieces written in five, four time, and uh, I'm sure there's others uh, that I'm forgetting, but I've generally only seen those really weird key sign or, uh, time signatures in uh, more modern music. Okay, let's try it again. That one's tough because you have to land on a black key. Okay, what's the purpose behind this? The whole thing is not only making the rhythm more awkward so when you go back to the normal way of playing it's easier, but uh, you're trying to train yourself to have a little burst of speed. Let's see. So like, so that's really awkward right there. That one's easy. That one's awkward. That one's pretty awkward. Now what you can do to kind of put that on steroids a little bit, uh, get rid of the first note and let's do one, two, three, four, five from the second note. Okay, I had a little note slip there from the third note. One, two, let's go real slow. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three. And always, you just, a lot of times you end with an incomplete uh, group of five, obviously. Okay, starting from the fourth note. Okay, one, two, three, four. From the fifth note now. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Awkward. Uh, trust me. Okay, let's try left hand. Um, we're just going to do from the first note. I'm not going to go through all five of those repetitions. I just wanted to show you once, okay? Let's try that again. if that helps you reset your hand a little better. Okay, again, very strange exercise, but I can tell you, those just feel like a breeze afterwards and you can go quite fast. Let's see. It helps a ton with action. Thank you so much for watching. As with all pro practice videos, the first section is free. If you'd like to view the rest of this video, or if you'd like to learn more about ProPractice, just click on the link on this screen or on the link in the comments section below. Also, if you could like this video, share it, or leave a comment below so it can be shared with as many people as possible, I would truly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support of ProPractice.